This is Your Health on Morning Express. Now, NASA flag bearer Raila Odinga on Monday revived the controversy over a tetanus vaccine administered by the government. Raila echoed fears expressed by the Catholic Church three years ago that the vaccine could lead to infertility in women. Raila termed the product program as the greatest crime against humanity ever committed against the women of Kenya. Well, on Your Health segment this morning, our medical correspondent, Dr. Masi Korir, is at our city center studio where she will be talking to a pharmacist with a different opinion on the controversial matter. Dr. Masi, good morning. Over to you. Um, a very good morning to you, Michelle, here from the Central Business District. And as you said rightly, this uh, tetanus vaccine controversy is back, thanks to Raila Odinga. And with us in studio is Dr. Kamamia Wamurishu, who is a pharmacist and the chairman of the Kenya Pharmaceuticals Distributors Association, who will help us just look into this controversy and whether it has any, it holds any water or it was just a conspiracy theory that, well, was meant to really scare women or make them keep off from taking this tetanus vaccine. And before we start this discussion, we'll just listen in to what Raila had to say during that press conference. We are saying that the Catholic Church was right. Tetanus vaccination was a targeted mass sterilization program. The church position was informed by what had happened in Mexico, Nicaragua, and the Philippines, where the various governments together with the World Health Organization, UNICEF, had conducted similar campaigns using tetanus toxoid impregnated the better human uh, chorionic gonadotropin, that is BHG, CG. These results all indi indicate that the tetanus toxoid vaccine had a high content of better human co chorionic gonadotropin hormone, which is BHCG that causes sterility in women. Okay, uh, Dr. Murishu, we've heard uh, what Raila Odinka said and that, well, this was a sterility, a secret sterility control program. Let's first of all, from a medical point of view, is there a fertility regulating vaccine in existence, really? No, good morning, everybody. And uh, I think it's a, uh, high time that this issue was put to rest. Mm -hmm. The statements by Honorable Wright uh, Leila Odinga uh, lack scientific merit at all. Because this is a debate which has been with us for the last three years. And uh, as far as uh, um, I am concerned, uh, this issue was sorted out that particular time. The claims that uh, the tetanus vaccine was raised with a, what we call the HCG hormone that was going to make uh, the people who received it, these were girls aged between 14 to 49 years, is basically false. What uh, I would like us to do is first we understand what is this HCG. HCG starts for the human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone. This hormone is normally produced by the placenta after conception within the first three weeks. The purpose of HCG is to ensure that the placenta starts producing the two hormones that are necessary for the maintenance of pregnancy. This is estrogen and progesterone. Now, when pregnancy tests are being done, when uh, ladies go to the hospitals or to the chemist, and then they seek pregnancy testing services, HCG is the one that is, is one of the hormones that are detected in these tests. And if it is present, it basically uh, confirms a positive pregnancy test. So now that's the history. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the human body, we have got quite a number uh, of hormones which exist. Mm -hmm. One of them is that we have got uh, a hormone such as insulin. Insulin is normally used for the metabolism of sugars. Uh, there are those people who are diabetic. And when they are not producing enough insulin, they are normally put on insulin. The other types of hormones which are normally produced in the body, and they can also be sourced commercially are the birth control pills, the, the, the normal contraceptive pills. Even these ones are hormonal in nature. 
from the lowest levels of medicine and even biology. Because even our students and our children who are at home, who are even in class uh, of form three and form four, they know one thing, that these hormones, whether they are produced internally or whether they are administered from outside, they do not stay in the body for long because they are metabolized very, very fast. And that's why you see that somebody who is diabetic, uh, they have been put on insulin therapy. If they stop taking or they stop being injected with that insulin, then the condition worsens. Already, who is using the birth control pills? If they stop using the birth control pills, they will be able to conceive. Why? It is because these substances are hormonal in nature, and from that, they do not stay in the body for long. Mm -hmm. So anybody in the first place who makes any claim that the tetanus vaccine has been raised with HCG, even if it was there, it will be totally inconsequential because it will be treated by the body through the normal metabolism process as a hormone. And within hours, it will not, uh, in the first place, have any effect. Okay. So let, those let claims me... basically do not hold any water. And I don't know uh, why they are coming back to haunt this country at this particular time. Now, let me, let me take you back to the research in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, by uh, Dr. G. P. Talwar from India where he was trying to, 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 to see if they can, they can uh, have HCG laced on the tetanus toxoid as a carrier so that it can be used for birth control. Could this discussion uh, be stemming from the discussion in the early 90s? Because this was a, a, like a research to introduce a fertility regulating vaccine and in this case, having HCG uh, being carried by the tetanus toxoid so that the body can produce antibodies against the HCG so that a woman cannot uh, carry a pregnancy to term or cannot have implantation in the first place. Could this discussion around tetanus and HCG be stemming from that research in the early 90s? Now, the, the, this discussion uh, lacks uh, merit in the first place because you see, so many researches are being done today. Some of them have been documented, and others have not been documented. Other researches are just being done purely for the purposes of academia or academic purposes. And if somebody try to do that, they are free to do that. And, but I don't believe that what is being claimed and what has been claimed in the last three years carries any merit for this purpose. When this uh, uh, tetanus toxin was made, it was not only for Kenya. The same same bash was used in Congo. It was used in Tanzania. It was used in the Philippines and another 57 countries. The same same bash. In uh, pharmaceutical terms, when we talk about a bash, we are talking about millions and millions and millions of quantities. This debate only arose in Kenya. It never arose in any other country. In any other of those countries I've mentioned, including the ones out of the country That's that sorry. there were any issues with that tetanus vaccine at that particular time. Uh, just to cut you short, the Philippines actually raised the same concern. And they, they actually went ahead to test their vials and their samples to see if they were actually laced with HCG. Because this, the, the issue raised in Kenya was not the first time, because Philippines and two other countries had raised the same concerns that, you know, this tetanus toxoid could be laced with HCG. And they went through the same uh, process we went through in 2014, 2015, to establish if at all this uh, tetanus toxoid had HCG in it. Now, what normally happens is when one country raises a claim, you are going to find that other countries who are using the same, same product are likely to raise the same, same claims. But the bottom line is this. After this vaccine was retested, and this test was done in several places. It was done at the University of Nairobi. It was done by the Rand Central Laboratories. Mm -hmm. The same same testing was also done uh, at the Nairobi Hospital. And if those tests were not conclusive, the same same uh, vaccines were taken out of the country to the University of Cologne in Germany, where the test was done. And no levels of the HCG were found at all at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Consequently, uh, this report was basically shared. I believe where the controversy came up is uh, the, the Catholic uh, uh, bishop are the ones who raised this issue. 
And even them, they were told to submit their samples. And they submitted three samples for analysis. And out of these three samples, the vials or the ampules were not tripled, and the ampules were broken. Mm -hmm. Consequently, the samples that were submitted by the Catholic fraternity failed to meet the barest minimum standards requirement for sampling for testing in such a case. But the samples that were submitted by the Ministry of Health were all intact, they were all sealed, and they were all reborn. And when the research was done on them, when the testing was done on them, no trace at all was found of HCG in okay. them. Well, the, the, Nairobi the reports from the Nairobi University had uh, traces of 0 0.3. Uh, the Lancet had uh, less than one. So there, there, was, there were these that actually reported some of these traces. And so the question is, because these are uh, documents that are in the public domain, would the traces found of HCG found in these tetanus toxoids or in these vials that were tested, are they enough to cause infertility and to cause worry among women? No, they are not uh, having, going to have any significant effect. At first, we have to understand about the issue of the production of uh, the vaccines, uh, the toxoids, and all those things. We have got two types of the, the vaccines. We have uh, the rife, uh, the rife vaccines, the rife attenuated. Since how are these vaccines grown? Mm. Uh, uh, most of them can be grown, from, uh, can be harvested from the serum of uh, animals such as the horse, and in the harvesting process you may get those traces of HCG. Because even if you look at all the reports, some of them are talking of uh, levels uh, below uh, 1.2, uh, below 0 0.76, and all those things. Those are hardly percent insignificant. And probably to buttress this point further about the HCG. People are now talking that H the HCG is going to bring infertility in, in women. The HCG hormone is also produced in the man in the male human being by the pituitary gland. So it is also present in the, in the male human being, and it's also even present even in the very, very young children, because it is a component of our normal body functions. And consequently, the levels which were there were basically hardly percent insignificant, and they're not going to have at all any pharmacological or any physiological effect as far as the fertility mm. of the women of this country is concerned. Okay, so in conclusion, you are part of the stakeholders that discussed this. What was the final agreement from the 2014-2015 discussion? Uh, it was that the vaccines that were being used in this country were not going to pose any negative health effect or threat to the people of this country. And they were safe for use, and even the next time, uh, we are going to have another round uh, of either polio or tetanus immunization, mm -hmm. then the procedure should continue. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Ari, for your time. We appreciate. And, of course, you have said uh, what the report, the uh, press release from the ministry, which assured Kenyans that these vaccines are safe and mothers should continue getting these vaccines. So we went to the streets and sought the views of Kenyans on what they thought about this tetanus and vaccine controversy that was raised the other day by Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Odinga. So we're listening to what the Kenyans had to say, and then we'll go back to Michelle Ngel and Mike Gitonga for, for, to wrap up the uh, Morning Express. What I would want to tell Kenyans is that this thing about this tetanus vaccine being injected through these, uh, being induced to this, uh, to, women, to our women, it's, it has no harm. And one thing, the WHO and the UNICEF, these are the medical practitioners. Raila is not a medical practitioner. So we wonder under what capacity does he try to mislead Kenya? Let the medical experts come in board. Let the engage victims concerning the whole issue of tetanus victim be brought into board because I think if he is that genuine, he should be having evidence and the victim should be, be the one to be talking more about the medical instability in their body. That's just siyasa. Nile siyasa wamezoea. Kila kitu wanona mbaya. Hakuna kitu wanona nga mzuri. So if for me, nimefanyo, nimedungo yo tetanus, naijaini affect. 
for both of these, they have done the same. Ajay effect. How can you prove that you can cause infertility? There is something that he talked about, the chorionic, the human chorionic uh, gonadotropy, which is uh, also referred to the HCG. That uh, hormone is uh, a hormone that supports the normal, de the, the normal development of uh, the human egg. So he should stop telling us issues that he do not understand as per now and let the people who are in the medical profession substantiate for him. Kama hakunge kuwa na nafasi hiyo ya kupata watoto, basi hakunge kuwa na free matani na mambo mingira bawa na uhusu watoto. Hata shule hazinge kuwepo, lakini sasa hata maeneo yale ambao hatu kuwa na watoto waniyo kuwa kwa shule hizi za chaketea na zingine sasa zipo kwa sababu wa mama wanapata watoto asiweke hiyo siasa maneno ya kusema tetanus hiyo ni siasa na asituletee siasa ya kugawanya watu wakati huu tunaenda uchaguzi wa tarehe 17 mwezi wa tisa. mimi ningetaka kuambia mheshimiwa Raila awache kuongea maneno hayo kwa wakati huu kwa sababu hayo ni mambo ili, ilipitwa na wakati asitumie hiyo kama kama kitu yake ya, ya kutafuta kura So those are some of your sentiments on this tetanus vaccine controversy that has come back. Despite the ministry assuring Kenyans that the tetanus vaccine is safe, there are a number of professionals who have come out to dispute this. So this is a story, we'll keep tabs on it. And this has been your health. I'm Dr. Masi Korir, and I hand you back to Michelle Ngele and Mike Gitonga. Thank you very much, Dr. Masi Korir, and also for enlightening us on that, because, of course, for many uh, Kenyans, it is a matter of concern no, what the uh, NASA leader had to say. And, Michelle, have you had a tetanus jab yourself? I have not. That's why I keep wondering how many women are getting these tetanus shots and for what reason. But, hey, uh, you know, uh, different strokes for different folks. I heard you say that yesterday. So it is a matter of concern, of course. But I'm thinking if, you know, this was first brought up three years ago by Catholic bishops, and three years is enough time to conduct a case study uh, to have concrete evidence as to whether this really is true or not. So I'm not sure whether uh, Raila Odinga has put forth this evidence. It is a matter that we need to keep following up on if it good, is a health Yeah, and the good thing is that we have Dr. Masi Korir on that, and I'm sure we'll be getting to the end of uh, this. And, of course, the que question that many Kenyans would want to know hmm. is there any evidence of what Raila is saying or is it just hogwash? At the end of the day, is there any risk? But uh, there you go. It's now six minutes to nine. Time for us to wind up and, uh, well, this